Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, friends, uh, Kingdom Champions. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I hope you've been blessed uh, the last uh, two days as we've been looking at overcoming obstacles. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Please feel free to share this content. Uh, tag someone, call someone who needs to listen to this. Uh, today we are dealing with obstacle number three. Um, go and check out what obstacle number one was, obstacle number two. And then today we're dealing with obstacle number three. We're looking at, what, we're looking at overcoming obstacles and we're looking at the life of Joseph and how he was able to overcome that obstacle. Father, we thank you and we bless you for today. As we get into your word, we pray, Jehovah, that the eyes of our understanding shall be open. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The third obstacle I want to deal with today is this obstacle called neglect. Neglect, all right, or being forgotten. It's an obstacle. It's an obstacle. We have people who are super gifted, super talented, super anointed, and uh, we, we all go through seasons where we feel um, there's a veil. We feel we're not being seen. We feel we're not being heard. And so today I want to look at how we overcome that obstacle. Genesis chapter, 30, chapter 39, uh, verse 20, um, introduces us to Joseph being thrown into prison, all right? Um, and as I shared yesterday, it's not every time you stand for something and the outcome is good. It's not every time, yeah? Joseph stood for something and that something led him to prison. That was the outcome. It's, it's a reality. Okay, so sometimes we stand for something thinking that we will be rewarded and, 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 you know, we will be announced somewhere. But sometimes it doesn't happen like that. It's a reality believers we must be aware of, all right? So don't feel bad and don't feel like I wasted it. I paid a price, but here I am. <laughs> here I am, God. Who are you? Why, why are you not rewarding me? No, um, your reward is still intact with our Father. So, so let's look at verse 20, 39. Joseph's master took him, into, him, him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warder. So the warder put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warder paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Um, a couple of interesting things to pick out from that story is, uh, you know, sometimes in life when we go through rough patches, uh, patches of life, and when we go through injustices, where we feel uh, my matter or I was not handled in a right way, uh, they were not fair, you know, this person was not fair, my boss was not fair, uh, my leader was not fair, uh, my pastor was not fair, and there's so much, so many things that we feel are injustices done to us. And this is what uh, Joseph went through in terms of feeling an injustice has been, has been done. He's done the right thing, but injustice prevailed, all right? And not only did injustice prevail, but in Genesis chapter 40, the cup bearer, Pharaoh's cupbearer, the guy who used to give Pharaoh drinks, <laughs> and the chief baker, the guy who was responsible for the food, that the bread that Pharaoh was eating, these were guys who were very close to Pharaoh, were thrown in prison. We don't know why. We are not told in the Bible, but they were thrown in prison, and they found Joseph, all right? They found Joseph there, and the Bible says that they were kept under Joseph's care. Very important to notice this. Joseph moved from being a boss, a leader, a manager um, uh, uh, in Potiphar's house to prison. So that's a downgrade, okay? But I want you to see something that is very interesting. Joseph's expression did not change. The Bible says he was still faithful. He was still successful. Anything that was put under his care, even in prison, worked out. And the Bible also says that Joseph, that God was with Joseph in Potiphar's house. God also was with him in the prison. He showed him kindness and favor, still in prison. All right. 
So we will experience moments of neglect. We will experience times when we feel we've been forgotten. We will experience moments where we feel our case was not handled the right way. But the lesson I want us to learn from Joseph is that he did not dial down on the giftings in his life. He did not water down. Sometimes I feel we, because of experiences of life, we tend to take a step back and we're like, you know what? It did not count there. I did the right thing. It didn't count there. So here, let me just chill out. Let me just be like everyone else. That wasn't Joseph's story. And as we deal with obstacle number two today, I want us to look at something that Joseph did. How do you overcome neglect? How do you overcome being forgotten? You overcome neglect through faithfulness. Through faithfulness. All right? Faithfulness. Whether Joseph was in, the, in Potiphar's house, responsible over several staff members, responsible over, over logistics of the house, responsible for money movements, Joseph was faithful. Joseph was thrown into the prison He's in prison. It's not the best of environments. Joseph remains faithful. He doesn't reduce himself because of the season he's in. I pray that we will not reduce ourselves because of the season we are in. I pray that we will not tone down, dial down because of the season. I pray that God will find us faithful. Luke 16.10 says that he who is faithful with little, that even with much, they will be faithful. So the cupbearer and the chief baker come into prison. They are kept under Joseph's care and they have a dream and both of them are very disturbed by this dream. And Joseph calls them and says, hey, what's going on? You guys look sad. And they explain to him and said, hey, we had a dream and we don't know what it means. And Joseph said, you know what? God is the one who interprets dreams. Share it with me. And they, are sh and they share it with Joseph. All right. I'm amazed that he's in prison, but he's still adding value to his fellow prison mates. <laughs> okay? He's in prison. They're suffering. All of them are suffering. All of them are probably in shackles. All right? All of them are receiving probably the same ration of food or the same time out or the same, you know, uh, 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 you know experiences. Maybe Joseph, do Joseph doesn't have an additional, uh, doesn't have additional privileges. Same environment, but Joseph adds value to his fellow prison mates. We overcome neglect through faithfulness. That's what we do. All right. They share the dream. Joseph interprets the dream for them. He adds value to them. All right. I want to I want to pause there and just say. Um, when we go through moments of dips in our life, I know the temptation is to pull back and say, man, I have nothing to give. I have nothing to offer. I can't do this anymore. Um, you know, my marriage is on the rocks. Who am I to help other marriages? You know, uh, my finances are hit hard. Who am I to talk to people about finances? You know, um, I don't have a job. Who am I to go out telling people about jobs? My business collapsed. Who am I to tell people about how to start a business? And there are all these struggles and battles within us. But the answer out of that is faithfulness. So Joseph went ahead and interpreted the dream of these two people. They were removed out of prison and taken back and reinstated. But the, the, the baker, as per the dream that Joseph, uh, the interpretation that Joseph gave, of course, he died. The cup bearer, continued serving Pharaoh. But Joseph had asked the cupbearer, when you go, please mention my case before Pharaoh so that I might be released from prison. And the Bible says that <laughs> the cupbearer forgot, neglect. He's been helped, but he forgets the one who's helped him. Okay, neglect, being forgotten. All right. And I know there are many of us who've been in spaces where we have sowed seed, we've labored, we've raised, we've blessed, we've been there. We've done this for this person. We have done this for families. We have sorted them out. We have blessed. We have lifted. We have called people. We have announced job opportunities. We have done all those things. When they get to where they get to, they forget. 
all right? They completely forget. And this is what Joseph went through. But I love Joseph because he did not allow or let neglect pressure him to give up on the places that God had called him to. So I pray for you today, as you go through your business for today, as you do what you're doing today, as you think about Joseph today, as you think about neglect, as you think about moments where you gave of yourself, but you are forgotten. You labored, but there was no immediate fruit. You sacrificed, but there was no immediate return. I pray that the denominator for you will be faithfulness, that you will not draw back and say, God, on Asasa, you know, you know, uh, let me be like everyone else. Um, but you will still interpret people's dreams, that you will still add value to people that will actually get them out from the situation you are in, that God will give us that heart that you will add, you're in the same situation, that you will give someone financial advice <laughs> and God lifts them up and you, you're still in the same predicament, you know? That you'll give someone business advice, that their businesses will grow and you, you're like, man, two of my businesses have shut down. That we will not hold back. The Bible says that our, our bellies, uh, uh, rivers of life-giving waters, let them flow, let them go out, you know? Um, the Bible says that in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. And in our brokenness, this is not of us, but in our brokenness, God is able to do so much. But we have to be faithful. Obstacle number three, neglect and being forgotten. You handle that through faithfulness. Remember Luke 16.10, he who is faithful with little will also be faithful with much. As you go about your business today, do not hold back. Add value to people. I love something John C. Maxwell said. He says that for the last 20 plus years, he has purposed that every day he will add value to someone. Every day. Every day he will add value to someone. He will send a message saying, you're amazing. You're good at this. I thank God for you. Thank you for helping me out last time. Thank you every day. There's no day that passes without him adding value. I pray that we will sow seeds of value to people around us. We will scatter seeds of hope, seeds of life, seeds of uh, encouragement. We will give it. We will use our abilities to interpret dreams, the gifts of the Holy Spirit God has given us, gifts of wisdom, gifts of discernment, gifts of faith, to not, just, to not only be of benefit to us, but to be of benefit to the body of Christ, to the community, to people who could even end up forgetting about us. I pray we will remain faithful in that journey. Thank you so much. God bless you. And let's continue tomorrow as we look at the next, I'm excited about this one, about the next obstacle that Joseph had to face today was about neglect and dealing with neglect. You do it through faithfulness. Keep showing up. Keep helping others. Keep sharpening people and take care of others, whether the reward is now or whether the reward is later. God bless you and watch over you today. Amen and amen.